Joining me on the line, he is from uh, one of our sister stations down in Oklahoma, WWLS, the sports animal. Matt Ravis is on the line. Hey, Matt, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. So uh, here we are. It is the end of July. We thought, oh, you know, we'll have NFL training camp stuff to talk about. Uh, college football <laughs> start to get kind of underway. And then Texas and Oklahoma drop a bombshell that completely changes everything. And this is the first Monday after that. Where are we at, Matt? <laughs> uh, that's a great question. I wish I could I wish I could tell you exactly where we're it, it's it's crazy because we cover the Oklahoma City Thunder, the NBA team in this market, and we have the NBA draft coming up in three days. We yeah. barely talked about it. We barely talked about it. So um where we're at right now is uh this morning OU and Texas have released a joint statement essentially telling the Big Twelve what we all expected, that they will not be renewing uh the, the grant of rights whenever they expire in twenty twenty five. So uh, next step is they will formally ask the SEC for membership, and uh, these, these schools will vote on it. I expect it to be 13 to 1 with uh, Texas A&M being the only, the only no on that vote. So what's the timeline for this? Because I thought I saw something about uh, the rights go through like 2025, I believe. Would it yes. be after yep. then that they would join the SEC? Or I, I would be shocked if it happened that late. I think it will, you know, there's so many moving parts in this that it's kind of hard to say, but it would just depend on, uh, like everything else, like the money. Money. If they were to bolt right now, OU in Texas, they would be on the hook for, um, I think it's $75 million. So I don't know if it's going to happen this next season, but possibly the season after that, or maybe um, even in 2023. But I would be shocked if it if it took that long, because this is obviously a big money deal. And I think that if it came to it, I think the SEC would put up some money, put up some cash to, uh, to facilitate this move. Because what did the, I, uh, another guy I interviewed last week from Nashville, he's embedded in uh, the SEC side. He said uh, mm-hmm. he had read a report that all the teams in the SEC, if this happens, are going to make about $20 million more a year. Yeah. Yep, is that, that true is or it is true? Okay, so it almost it's almost one of those things. It's like just buy them out. We'll we'll make it up in like three years. Exactly. So exactly, exactly. It's cost it's cost benefit, just like uh just like everything else is. So no, for sure, you may lose a little bit of money on the front end, but. Uh, you're going to make it up on the back end, no doubt about it. And, and then some. Matt Ravis from uh, WWLS, the sports animal down in, uh, it was Oklahoma City, correct? Yes, sir. All right. So um, as we kind of look at this, um, and, and granted, we're talking at a little after 10, uh, 10 a.m. Central on Monday. Who knows what's going to happen from here on out? But uh, this weekend, there were reports that, you know, obviously Texas, Oklahoma going that way. Uh, I saw reports that Kansas and Iowa State may maybe talking to the Big Ten. Uh, There was talks of Oklahoma State maybe talking to the Big Ten. There was even talks uh, in an unsubstantiated report that the SEC may have reached out to Ohio State and Michigan. What's true and what's (laughs) false right now? I mean... Well, yes, and and it's going to be for... I mean, this this is decades. Uh, you know, you talk about the ripple effect decades down the line. So in terms of like what's true and what's not right now, I think it all, I don't want to say all these reports have a, uh, a grain of truth to them, but I just think that there are so many conversations happening um, and it makes sense, right? If you think about it, if you're Oklahoma State, for example, you need to uh, examine all of your avenues, and they have a new athletic director. This is his first real big task on the job. His name is Chad Weiberg. Um, he's he's going to be looking for every single avenue, whether it's the Pac-12 or the or the big, you know, the Big Ten, yeah. or if he would go to, I, I mean, even a lower conference. I think like the AAC um, is not entirely out of the, you know, out of the realm of possibility because you, you, there's no guarantee that those the Pac-12 or the Big Ten would want to take them. So I think that a lot of these, uh, there's just so many conversations going on right now. Adam, that, <laughs> uh, I think I think all avenues are being discussed. Think about one of these lower tier conferences. All of a sudden, they could get an injection of Power Five teams in them. And all of a sudden, mm-hmm. it's a completely different conversation for them. But mm-hmm. as you're kind of looking at this, I kind of look at it as dominoes. Uh, you know, this was the first one to fall. What's going to be the next thing that happens? Let's say, let's say that uh, sometime today, Oklahoma and Texas announce formally that they are doing the SEC thing. Okay, let's take that step. What's next after? Does the Big 12 implode? Does the Big 10 eat it? Uh, the, what what do you think is going to happen next? From the Big 12 standpoint, I think that they all these schools do everything they can to try to stay together. Um, and again, it's just a cost benefit thing because so much of the value, so much of the revenue they receive every year, I'm talking about these Big 12 schools, are because they play Oklahoma and Texas because yeah. those they put those on TV every year. So is it worth 
staying together? How much how much less are you going or how much um, yeah, how much less money are you going to make if you do stay together? So my prediction is that ultimately I do think that the Big 12 is going to kind of implode like you said. I think there will be a um, a kind of mass exodus as these schools are saying, "Well, we're not going to wait on on, on the ship to go down. We're going to go ahead and find a life raft." So I would imagine that that's going to that's going to happen here in the next few years and that could accelerate or maybe in the next year or two, and that could accelerate Oklahoma and Texas going to the SEC. What is so wrong with the Big 12? Because we had issues with this, yeah. God, it would, it would have been about 10 years ago or so, where it, mm-hmm. it looked like uh, Oklahoma might go to the Pac-12, or it, I believe it was Pac-10 at the time. But what what is it about the Big 12 that people don't want to be in it? And, and the only reason that that got stopped is because I believe that there was um, there was political pressure put on by you know the legislature in Texas that they didn't want to split apart these Texas schools. So and I don't think that's going to happen this time. So that's a great question. Um, you know, Joe Castiglione has been upset about some of the kickoff times that they've been yeah. they've been handed by Fox. A lot of 11 a.m. kickoff times, for example, that Nebraska game, 50th anniversary of the game of the century. Joe Castiglione is the athletic director for Oklahoma. And that's been his baby. Yeah, but that's you been know, his project. You know and, what, and though? He's upset about stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You know what, though? With that game, though, uh, Oklahoma is clearly on a different level than Nebraska. Yeah. From a yeah. national standpoint, big deal to Oklahoma, big deal to Nebraska. National standpoint, I could see why they'd be like, you know what? We're going to put that game at 11. We're just yeah. going to get that turd over yeah. with. It's going to be over pretty quickly, yeah. <laughs> Everybody hates uh, Nebraska, don't they? <laughs> well, it's just I don't think they have a chance to get back to where they were. I really don't. I wish they would. Um, I wish they could get back to where they would, but I don't think there's any any chance of that for a number of reasons. But hey, I mean, that, that the 11 a.m. kickoff. Is, Fox loves that. Fox loves their 11 a.m. kickoff. That's their their prime time slot. I know you was arguing. Well, this kills us in uh, a number of ways, especially recruiting is the one thing that they're worried about. So. I would say that, you know, to go back to the question about the Big 12, what's wrong with it? Um, the TV deal, uh, I would say, certainly is one of the one of the big things. They've never had a great TV deal or a great bowl package, right? Or am I wrong in that? I, I certainly think that they want better, that they think they could do more being one of the premier teams. And partly it's just because it's the other teams holding up their end of the bargain. They, you know, from an Oklahoma fan standpoint, they sit here and watch the Texas games every single year and just saying, come on, Texas, win this game. Don't blow this because we need you to be good. We need you to be one of the, you know, the flag carriers for our conference. And uh, because you can't count on any of those other schools to, uh, to be there on a, on a yearly basis. So I, uh, I saw a couple reports and it it basically, it's kind of looking down the line of what we think is going to happen. I feel like, and this is just my point of view, but I did I did like this other idea that I think the Power Five, the teams involved in the Power Five, maybe not aligned how they are now. I think they're going to break away from the NCAA at some point and just do their own thing. But mm-hmm. then I saw somebody say that, uh, especially with the report about Oklahoma and Mi- or excuse me, um, uh, Ohio State and Michigan, with the SEC calling them. It's like, is the SEC just trying to turn it, do its own thing and be its own kind of little NFL? I've got to tell you, I think that's exactly where it's headed. I really do. And then you go, you know, Mark Emmer, the president of the NCAA, I think just two weeks ago was talking about how we need to decentralize. We need to give up power to some of these schools. Um, so I think he realizes where this is, you know, where, the, where this landscape is going. So. Yeah, no, you're right. I think ultimately they do break away the, from the NCAA because they don't need them, and you're. I think it would be essentially a a minor league for the NFL. Yeah, I think that's exactly where it's at. It actually, it'd be it would be the minor league that uh, the NFL has always wanted instead of like yes. uh, who was the uh, the amateur football one? Uh, uh, oh, it wasn't the XFL. Uh, oh, was it the AAF? The, yeah, it was one of them last year that was like, yeah, we're the NFL's minor league. And the, the, yeah. the NFL had the thought of like, they were looking around like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was not good football. But the college football is good football. And there's a lot about college football that sets it apart from the NFL. And that's one of, honestly, that's one of my big worries. I'm, I'm really excited about this move for football reasons. But you think about some of the things that makes college athletics great. And, you know, we've, we, this summer is, you know, if you told me that name, image, and likeness wasn't going to be the number one story of college football in the summer, I would have told you you were crazy, but it's not. It's um, weird. It, that, that stuff certainly factors into it. So that's one thing I'm really intrigued about is how does college football remain separate from the NFL if, if this is the direction where we're headed? Oh, what if, what if the NFL is teaming with. Uh, just follow me down this rabbit hole for a second. Okay. What yeah. if the NFL is teaming with some of these, like on a very, hey, we'd like to set up a minor league. 
we think we could work something out. Like under the table type thing. Like yeah, we just need yeah. you to get away from the NCAA. You bring the schools with us. We'll make you a minor league team. Because think about it. I mean, you know, 32 NFL teams, you've got these different schools. You could have uh, these guys, you know, moving around, trading and all that. That could be interesting, man. It would. It, that would be. Um, I don't think, you know, it, again, maybe earlier this summer I would have told you you're absolutely crazy. <laughs> you're telling me that. But at this point in time, Adam, I'm like, hey, let's go. You know, all Yeah, I know, all. right? Uh, so yeah, I think anything's on the table, but that's that could be the direction we're headed. It really could be. And, and, and I'm always reminded more and more every single day that everything is about money. So yeah. financially, if it makes sense, then then it, it, it could happen. Uh, Matt Ravis from WWLS, the sports animal down in Oklahoma City. Uh, tell me this, Matt, as you kind of went around this week and talked and talking to folks and whatever, are folks in Oklahoma excited to go to the SEC? Are they sad they might be leaving the Big 12 because of all the rivalries and all that? What's kind of the feeling? I think most Oklahoma fans, are are pretty excited just you know you start thinking about some of the destinations you get to go to instead of going to oh boy lubbock uh you know you get to go to columbia south carolina (laughs) or tuscaloosa or oxford or you know i mean there's so many great destinations in the sec so i think ou fans are really really pumped up um and i think maybe a little bit nervous about how competitively they'll stack up oh boy they've spent so long talking crap on the sec uh, because the sec they're the people who chant SEC and all that over and over again. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. They're kind of arrogant over there. I know you fans, I think, realize that that's the best football conference, but there's some, there's been some uh, bristling there. Oklahoma State fans, that's a totally different story. They are, um, Adam, they're, they're despondent because their future is, is is really murky right now. Uh, you know what? I see Oklahoma. I think could fit in. They'd probably be upper level SEC. I'm not saying they'd you know be up there with Alabama and you know some of those other schools just yet. But I see them. Yeah. They, they'd be competitive. I think Texas would get murdered in the SEC. They haven't. They if you go back in, in the last decade, they are sixth best in the Big Twelve in winning percentage in conference. Sixth best. And you think of Texas, you think of that's one of the yeah. Uh, you know the standard bears in the big the big 12 and obviously they're they're making the move for a reason they earn more money than anybody else in college athletics but no you're right they haven't been competitive um now i'm a, i'm a fan of steve sarkeesian i really am i think as long as his um off field issues are are sorted out <laughs> and i think that he is uh i think that he is a really uh you know really talented football coach who i think can handle some of the um you know some of the university Stuff, some of the the regents looking over your shoulder and stuff like that that their old coach Tom Herman did do quite as well. So we will see. But they, um, I mean, there there could definitely be some losing seasons. And for Oklahoma, there's going to be there's going to be four lost seasons in there. I guarantee you, five lost seasons. So yeah, uh, OU fans will have to get used to that as well. The uh, the Texas job, I always look at it where it, it on the outside looks like an awesome job, but then you get in right. there and everyone's always calling you or asking or saying what you should do like i see like three days on the job and you're like this job sucks man oh yeah oh yeah no it's like uh someone someone talked about it and i I wish i could remember who it was so i could attribute it but basically said it's like having seven jerry jones looking over your shoulder uh, the entire time but with you know between the regents and all that and you got boosters and yeah I, i completely agree adam all right so uh Let's uh, let's start wrapping this up. Matt Ravis from uh, WWLS, who, by the way, has family here in uh, Central Iowa. So uh, hopefully they're listening right now. Uh, you can catch it's them on better. the middle of the day show uh, after uh, afternoon sports beat. Correct. Also, mm-hmm. that's right. correct. Uh, you got socials out there? Yeah, just uh, at Matt Ravis. Uh, Ravis okay. spelled R A V I S. All right, we'll get that on the website as we kind of wrap up today. Where are we heading with this? What do you think? Uh, what do you think is going to be the next news story with this? Uh, I, I, now I would expect, well, first first I would expect the SEC to uh, kind of poll its membership and, uh, you know, have the vote. They need, I think it's 11 votes out of the 14 teams to get in, and they will they will get those. I'm pretty confident in that. Um, and then I think the next thing we're going to see is some of the landing spots, some of the potential landing spots for these uh, Big 12 schools. Uh, you know, you mentioned Kansas and Iowa State to the Big 10. I think that those are – those are logical fit. Those those make sense yeah. to me. Um, maybe Oklahoma State and Tech um, out to the Pac-12. Um, those sort of those sort of moves right there. And I, I'm just interested to see where where everybody lands and what kind of the uh, the domino effect is. So I think that's what we see next. 
It's it's going to get wild. College football yeah. will never look the same again, right? No, no, it won't. Um, I mean, this is we're talking. I I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that this is this is setting up the next you know half half century of college football. I I really don't think that's that's an exaggeration to say. That's crazy. Matt Ravis from WWLS, the Sports Animal, will have all his info at the bottom of the page. Thank you so much, Matt. Hey, Adam. Appreciate you having me. <laughs>